everybody and welcome to another imprompt video. Uh, I got these books the other day and I just wanted to show you uh, what I've got and maybe we could you know do some uh, exercise which this book has uh, because I really really want to learn how to pen and ink draw and combine that with watercoloring that's like my biggest dream yeah so if I don't uh, try and practice I won't get any better at it at all so I'm sorry about the mess but it's my diamond painting underneath here and my drills and everything so this is not going to be a long, complicated video of any kind. So let me show you. I got this one. It's also a workbook. Uh, it's volume four and it's by Rahul Yang. I don't know if I pronounce the name correctly. Um, and there's a lot of exercises in this book how to draw mountains, water, wooden structures, planes, and landscapes based on the prior uh, exercises. And when I got it, I thought it looked kind of cheap and boring, but it's not. It's, I was very, you know, um, surprised in a good way how it looked inside. It's an English book, so for me who's Swedish, it's a little bit more difficult to understand all the technical terms. But um, yeah, it's, it's no problem, it's not biggie. So there's like really step by steps how to, for example, this is the technique one on how to draw mountains and you know, I'm thinking it can't be that hard to, you know, dra draw these lines. <laughs> I might think differently once I start trying. And then he shows you how to draw if you do your lines in different directions. And if you repeat it more on one side where the shadow is, it will right away... Uh, make a difference and how you make the structures in the mountain sides so it's really cool I don't think I'm allowed to to show you the whole book so I'm not um, let me show you something else um, there's a lot of mountain drawing Yeah, he also shows you, you know, how to draw buildings uh, using the perspective technique. And that is also, I'm not saying it's easy, but <coughs> making a plain house like this, uh, you can do that easily with, hel with the help of a, a ruler, you know. So that's, I think it's kind of, it feels doable. So with the mountains and with the building, I mean, you have two uh, objectives, I think you call it, in your painting or your drawing that you already there can draw. So yeah, very nice. I think this is like $6 on Amazon. I bought this one in a Swedish bookstore online, but I've checked it out and they're at Amazon as well. Um, so yeah. I could, I guess, link the books. I don't have any of those affiliate links or whatever you call it. So uh, I guess I will just link the book. So, <clears throat> oh, and I've ordered, the Swedish book had volume five, six, and seven as well. So I've ordered that and one, two, and three, I will get from Amazon. So I ordered, 
this one as well because um, Stephen Mitchell from The Mind of Watercolor on YouTube recommended these books. And this is the author Alfonso Dunn. Yeah, he has a YouTube channel and he's amazing at drawing. Oh Lord, go check him out. He's awesome. And I, I chose, he has two books. I chose this one because it was a workbook. So I read there was a lot of exercises in that and I like that. But when I started looking in this book, I realized that this book is connected with the first book. So I need that book as well. So it's coming, but it's so cool. You know, he, let's see. Yeah, so the first chapter is about strokes. And I guess that's important. Uh, for you know with your strokes you will sh uh, show you know the form and the size and if it's shadows and stuff yeah so here is he has showed how uh, to draw which lines and he calls them different um, names and then he has put the lines up and some uh, tracing exercises first so you can trace the lines and then you keep on going uh, yourself that's very very nice and as Stephen Mitchell suggested suggested if you don't feel comfortable you know drawing in your book you could copy the page for your own use and uh, practice before you start in the book so you have those exercises throughout the book. Yeah, one second. My husband just came home and my dog wants to leave the bedroom. One second. Yeah. I don't know, the thing with dogs and closed doors. You're not allowed to have any doors closed. Let me move this phone over there. Oh, and today I got my new phone and I hate to change phones. It's not such a big deal to, you know, ugh, uh, yes. Anyway, never mind. So here's some different um, lines to practice. How, and it's about, as it says, it's a pen control, so controlling the strokes and it's so cool you have that throughout the book and there are some stippling practicing it's so nice and when I see this I get intimidated because I cannot draw a nose but you know in worst cases I could just uh, copy the nose if I want to practice the shadowing you know so yeah I awesome book really cool I recommend this so I wanted to to do some of this stroking practicing and then we are go getting to uh, the pen and ink with water, watercolor, this is, there is no more beautiful art than this, in my opinion. It's a very nice book. It's by the author Claudia Nice. Uh, this book was uh, on Stephen Mitchell's affiliate link on Amazon. So this got me interested because I've seen his work and I thought, this must be good. So I got her other book as well because it said step-by-step -step guidance for all skill levels. But um, I don't know. Uh, it wasn't what I was. It wasn't what I expected. No. Uh, for example, she shows this oh, very very cute squirrel. 
I mean, can you imagine that she has drawn and painted? Uh, I mean, there are people out there who makes the most amazing art. I'm just in awe. And I just wish I... Yeah, I wish I could, really. So this is the step by step. And I don't know, it looks very complicated, don't you think? She explains very well, I find it. It's also in English. <clears throat> but this kind of uh, font, I don't know, it was, um, I don't know if you can get that, if I get it in the camera at all. But to me, it was difficult to read. So, uh, but she, oh yeah, but actually one thing I really liked was, yeah, the same thing with the birds, you know, you get a step by step, three steps and a little bit which colors she has used and mixed. And that's very nice. Uh, but if I compare this to the drawing book I have about learning to draw birds only. It's um, the very different. So, uh, but what I do like is these examples she, she gives here. Let me see if I can like how to do moss. And this is like wet on wet. And then you add some more, you sprinkle some salt in that. Maybe you add a little bit more brown. And then you use your pen work. And I mean, I'm not saying I would ever get it like that, but it's such a small area. And I'm thinking, well, putting some colors like this on a piece of watercolor paper and using some salt and some ink, yeah. I think everyone could try it at least. You don't have to be an artist or the best drawer in the world. You know, you don't have to be able to do this to try this out. That's what I'm thinking. What she also shows here is some different special effects, how you can use different things to create this in your watercolor. And I mean, you can just slab on some colors on a piece of paper and try this out and you get, you will get a very interesting abstract picture for sure. And uh, yeah, she also shows a little bit about different ways of uh, making lines like stippling and you have parallel lines and you have the, the what you call that con contour lines or no that's just line drawing yeah whatever and wavy lines and crisscross so that's nice but she, she I found one place I thought it was really cool because it seemed like she used like things she picked out in the woods and she dipped like the leaf in the paint let me see. Yeah, I think this is it. Yeah, I think this is kind of what I'm thinking about. To me, it's it, it seems like she has put down the leaf and painted above it, I think. She removed the leaf and you she got this. I'm not sure. But you could take the leaf and dab it in paint and then like stamp it on some watercolor paper to get some base to, you know, draw after, I guess. So it was not as um, what I was thinking, but there are some easier uh, 
exercises like this. She has put some dabs of different color. She takes her pen and to and outline the different colors and try she tries to make rocks. And in the end she uses the detail brush. I think it's a great practice uh, exercise. So, yeah. I wouldn't say it is for all skill levels, but it was a nice book and there are some great ideas in this book. And if nothing else, some great, beautiful art. So, <clears throat> to the last book and oh, very, very nice. So this is also Claudia Nice. Uh, creating tex textured landscapes with pen, ink and watercolor. And it would be so fantastic to see these, you know, this artwork in real life. Yeah, and when I see pictures like this my mind starts to you know start thinking a little bit about how am I supposed how am I gonna do this and that but I mean this is I've never done something detailed like this this is also I oh, it's so nice how you can see the strokes and that yeah so this is a little step by step how you draw the picture first and to me that is like you know, you really you have to know how to draw this, and I don't feel that comfortable. Anyway, and then you st after that you laid the flat washes, and then you, I think most of it is glazing. That means you paint on top of the wash when it has dried. But it's very nice, isn't it? It doesn't have to be so detailed. Yeah. <clears throat> so and here she shows you know how to do clouds in the sky and you know there is no more nothing else satisfying you know of oh this is really nice and how you can make the blooms look like the clouds yeah very very nice she also shows different techniques and here you know she shows that you can use these uh, what do you call that a cotton swab and the rubber at the end of your pencil I mean <laughs> cool isn't it I think it's really cool and here she shows how you can you know do a tree trunk and then you use gauze on top of that and you paint on top of that, you let it dry and you remove it and you get an awesome trunk. Oh, it's so cool. So, so cool. Yeah. Same thing here. I don't know how much you're allowed to, to show, so I will not show anymore. Very nice book. Highly recommend this one. I will link them all if I find them on Amazon. So, <clears throat> I don't know, but what time is it? There's five more minutes, yeah. Oh, what's this? What have I, moleskin, oh. So, I just wanted to, you know, try my my pens. So I'm using my large, extra large um, moleskin sketching book because my intention is to do Ink October this year. Uh, Inktober, I think it's called, not the other thing I said. Uh, and I, I'm very, very intimidated by it. So in my mind, I'm like, am I really gonna be able to draw 
all those things. And if I feel like, no, I'm not going to do it because of the prompt list, then I want to try to sketch, do the practices, maybe do some watercolor with ink in it instead, just to keep on, you know, do my own inktober. So, and this pen, mm, I love it. It's a graph. Graph Gear 1000 from Pentel. Very, very nice. So, the first exercise, right? There are four keys to maintain consistency in your strokes spacing, size, weight, and direction. Your strokes need to be perfect or identical, but should be uniformed enough to convincingly convey cohesion. I have no idea what that means. To, de to develop consistency, do not rush your strokes. Focus on drawing at a steady, controlled pace. Right, got it. So we're going to do um, those spacing lines, so straight lines, one with a little more space and one closer up. And I will, I think I will try with the, uh, spacing with my, um, graph gear first. So, And I feel right away that I want to hurry. It's difficult to get the lines straight. And I notice that they get smaller and smaller. So <clears throat> I want to try with my ink. And I'm using the Stedler Pigment Liner 0 0.8. And it's a very thick pen. And that is why I'm choosing it when I'm practicing. So and I, I want to trace. And I'm the kind of person that I usually don't have the patience for this, like exercising your lines and how to do this and how to do that. I just want to try to to draw a picture right away, you know. <coughs> so here I think my uh, fine liner is way too to follow those lines. You can see the difference, right? It looks much more light there and darker there. So this was called spacing. 
um, I gotta show you one thing. Where did I take the picture of that? Oh, my daughter just wanted to get her first diamond painting kit. Let me see if I can. Can you see her there? I'm so proud of her. She's 12 and she didn't sit very long with it. She has, she's a little bit like her mommy. She wants to start something and she goes out and get it. And then, you know, she loses her uh, focus. Then she, yeah, she just walks away and go do something else. So it's a bit difficult to have the exact same space. But I feel that there is a difference from this and this. For sure. And maybe I think my lines get a little bit more shaky when I slow down the pace. But I'm so happy that I actually did this because now I've taken a step. And that's a big thing, because I'm very, 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 very intimidated by drawing, inking, watercoloring. And that's, you know, my absolute favorite art form. And I love to watch other people do this. I can, yeah, watch for hours on YouTube. So... I usually fall asleep watching those videos. If it isn't a diamond painting video, of course. <laughs> yeah, that was an exercise. I'm happy. I've tried it out. And I just wanted to show you this. I just felt like doing an impromptu video. I was in a really bad mood. I'm very low today and I was like, let's just make a YouTube video and share you, with you uh, some cool stuff I got. And maybe you feel like trying these things out as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, if you have any questions or you want me to try something else out or want me to show you something special or whatever, just leave a comment below and uh, don't forget to hit subscribe because uh, then I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye.